high level again, is it compiled or is it an interpreted language? So Python is just in time compilation. What's what's Mojo? So Mojo, a complicated answer, does all the things. Mm -hmm. So it's interpreted, it's chip compiled, and it's statically compiled. <laughs> um, and so this is for a variety of reasons. Um, so uh, one of the things that makes Python beautiful is that it's very dynamic. Mm -hmm. And because it's dynamic, one of the things they added is that it has this powerful metaprogramming feature. And so if you look at something like PyTorch or TensorFlow or or um, I mean, even a simple, simple use case, like you define a, a class that has the plus method, mm -hmm. right? You can overload the dunder methods like dunder add, for example, and then the plus method works on your class. And so it has very nice and very expressive dynamic metaprogramming features. In Mojo, we want all those features to come in. Like we don't want to break Python, we want it all to work. But the problem is, is you can't run those super dynamic features on an embedded processor or on a GPU, right? Or, or if you could, you probably don't want to just because of the performance. And so we entered this question of saying, okay, how do you get the power of this dynamic metaprogramming into a language that has to be super efficient in specific cases? And so what we did was we said, okay, we'll take that interpreter. Python has an interpreter in it, mm -hmm. right? Take that interpreter and allow it to run at compile time. Mm -hmm. And so now what you get is you get compile time metaprogramming. Mm -hmm. And so this is super interesting and super powerful because one of the big advantages you get is you get Python style expressive APIs. You get the ability to have overloaded operators. And if you look at what happens inside of like PyTorch, for example, with automatic differentiation and eager mode, and like all these things, they're using these really dynamic and powerful features at runtime. But we can take those features and lift them so that they run at compile time. So you're, because C++ has metaprogramming. With, yeah. with, with templates, yep. but it's really messy. It's super messy. It's, it's always, um, it was accidentally, I mean, different people have different interpretations. My interpretation is that it was made accidentally powerful. It was not designed to be Turing complete, for example, but that was discovered kind of along the way accidentally. Um, and so there have been a number of languages in the space. And so they usually have templates or code instantiation, code copying features of various sorts. Um, some more modern languages or some more new, newer languages, let's say, like, you know, they're fairly um, unknown, like Zig, for example, um, says, okay, well, let's take all of those types that you can run it, all those things you can do at runtime and allow them to happen at compile time. And so one of the problems with C++, I mean, which is one of one of the problems with C++. There we go. <laughs> is wrong words. We're gonna is, offend everybody too. Oh, that's okay. I mean, everybody hates me for a variety of reasons, anyways. I'm sure, right? <laughs> I've written it's enough. Just the way they show love. I, I have written enough C++ code to earn a little bit of grumpiness yes. with C++. Yes. But, um, but one of the problems with it is that the metaprogramming system templates is just a completely different universe from the normal runtime programming world. And so, if you do metaprogramming and programming. It's just like a different universe, different syntax, different concepts, different stuff going on. And so, again, one of our goals with Mojo is to make things really easy to use, easy to learn. And so there's a natural stepping stone. And so as you do this, you say, okay, well, I have to do programming at runtime. I have to do programming at compile time. Why are these different things? <laughs> How hard is that to pull it out? Because that sounds, to me as a fan of metaprogramming in C++ even, how how hard is it to pull that off? That sounds really, really exciting because you can do the same style programming at compile time and at runtime. That's really, really exciting. Yep, yep. And so, I mean, in terms of the compiler implementation details, it's hard. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be shy about that. It's super hard. It requires, I mean, what Mojo has underneath the covers is a completely new approach to the design of the compiler itself. Mm -hmm. And so this builds on these technologies like MLIR that you mentioned but it also includes other like caching and other interpreters and JIT compilers and other stuff like that. So you that have like that an interpreter inside the within compiler. Within the compiler, yes. Oh, man. And so it really takes the standard model of programming languages and kind of twists it and unifies it with the runtime model, right? which I think is really cool. And to me, the value of that is that, again, many of these languages have metaprogramming features, like they grow macros or something, right? You lisp, right? Yes, I, I know your roots, right? <laughs> um, you know, and, and this is a powerful thing, right? And so, you know, if you go back to Lisp, one of the most powerful things of that, about it is that it said that the metaprogramming and the programming are the same, right? And so that made it way simpler, way more consistent, way easier to understand, reason about, and it made it more composable. So if you build a library, you can use it both at runtime and compile time. 
which is pretty cool. Yeah, and and for machine learning, I think metaprogramming, I think we could generally say is extremely useful. And so you you get features. I mean, I'll jump around, but there's the feature of auto tuning yeah. and adaptive compilation just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, so okay, so let's come back to that. Sure. So, yeah, all right. So so what 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 is what is what is machine learning like? What or what is a machine learning model like? You take a PyTorch model off the internet, yeah. right? Um, it's really interesting to me because what a Py, what PyTorch and what TensorFlow and all these frameworks are kind of pushing compute into is they're pushing into like this abstract specification of a compute problem, which then gets mapped in a whole bunch of different ways, mm-hmm. right? And so this is why it became a metaprogramming problem. Is that you want to be able to say, "Cool, I have I have this neural net. Now run it with batch size a thousand, <laughs> right? Do 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 a, do a mapping across batch, or okay, I want to take this problem now run it across a thousand CPUs mm-hmm. or GPUs." Right, and so like this this problem of like de- describe the compute and then map it and do things and transform it are are like actually it's very profound and that's one of the things that makes machine learning systems really special. 